it's too warm to talk. Quite simply put, it is far too warm to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm hoping that the 4K camera is not picking up every drop of sweat coming from my forehead. But it's an exciting week. We're of course waiting on two signings coming through the door at Celtic. We heard of one of them yesterday and we've heard of the other one today. So let's talk all about it and what could be a very exciting week for Celtic. And as always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. We are so, so close to 35,000 subscribers now. Um, I think we're only about 150 away. So if you're watching this video and you haven't already subscribed, then you know what to do. Go down below and let's get to 35k before the new campaign begins. We're back in video format today rather than the live streams we've done over the last couple of days. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this man that has been linked with Celtic today. Uh, after Aaron Moy yesterday, but should we maybe touch on Moy a little bit first? Very quickly, I just want to touch on Moy uh, one more time because yesterday I done a live stream discussing it, so maybe not everybody caught it or caught my opinion. It's up on the channel. You can go back and watch it if you want to hear my thoughts, but it's just like the guy we're going to talk about today as well. It's a transfer. It's a name that's been met with a, a kind of divide, a split opinion amongst the Celtic support for many reasons. And as I said yesterday, I can understand being underwhelmed. I can understand being excited. I think you're allowed to be on either side of that. I'm, I'm very much on the fence. And I don't like usually being on the fence. I'm usually very opinionated. But I think with this one, a lot of people are moaning over nothing. I can understand being underwhelmed, as I said, but I think there's a lot of crying and, and, and really sticking the knife in Aaron Moy's back before he's even here. And I know I've done that in the past. I've done that with Joe Hart. I've done that with James McCarthy. I've done that with players that we've signed before. But with Aaron Moy, I feel like it's slightly less justified, you could say. Someone who's still playing at a good level. He's been key for the Australian national team. A lot of the Australian fans who watch my videos have been in the comments ranting and raving about the, the potential signing of Aaron Moy. So I think it's one that we should meet with a, a little more excitement. And look, he's coming in to do a job that we, we know we needed. A bit of depth in the midfield and it's maybe not that number six player that we've been looking for. Um, but I'm sure that Celtic will still be keeping their eyes open in the market with about 40 days left to go. There's still business that can be done. So I think by adding someone in on a year-long contract, it's nothing short of a, a positive. You know, I think that this is a guy who's played at a very good level in the Premier League before, almost 100 Premier League appearances. He might not be at that peak level he was five years ago, but he's certainly someone who can kick a ball. You know, he's someone who's going to come in for the next year and, and do a job at Celtic. So I think that we should meet it with a little more positivity um, and we'll see what happens. I mean, the way that the reaction has gone on social media, I'm wanting to come in and just run the league because I want them to prove so many folk wrong. But we'll see what happens. I think we all know the role that Aaron Moy will play at Celtic. Um, and we're just waiting to hear more of an update on that. But as I said, you can check out my full opinion on Aaron Moy and the site of the potential signing of him in yesterday's live stream, which is still live on the channel. So Ange Postacoglu said on Saturday he wanted two signings through the door this week. One of them, we are assuming, is Aaron Moy, whose discussions still go on. But the other may have been revealed over the past few hours and the late hours of last night. A centre-half, we've been crying out for one. We need more depth. We can't rely on Welsh and Julian, who might not even be here. We needed to add options and it looks as though Celtic are ready to add to that. Moritz Jens of FC Lorient in France. Let's hope he's better than the last Moritz that played for Celtic. He's being linked with the club to come in and add numbers to the centre-back area. And just like Aaron Moy, it's being met with quite a divided opinion. And I'm going to sit here on this chair once again and say I'm very much on the fence. And why I'm on the fence, I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about the guy. I've done my research this morning, as I always do when I do these Celtic transfer talk videos. I've looked up what I need to know about him so that I can report it to you with an informed or somewhat informed opinion. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm absolutely outraged that Celtic going for someone who isn't at a higher level when I've never seen this guy kick a ball. I've never watched him play a 90 minutes of football. Um, I think that ultimately we need a depth in this area. And this is someone who Celtic have been linked with in the past or revisiting now. And obviously that Ange Postacoglu thinks is good enough. I don't think this is one of these signings like a James McCarthy that could be coming higher up from a Desmond. It's not Neil Lennon shoving a do-do-do hand uh, out of nowhere on us. You know, this is someone that obviously Celtic have been tracking. It's obviously somebody Celtic have had prior interest in and still have interest in. And he's coming in to fill in a role that I feel like he'll grow into. Um, as, you know, he's, he's, he's coming out to be a backup. Let's be real here. This is a guy who's going to come in and be a third-choice centre-half. Starfelt and Carter Vickers are the settled 
and the best partnership at the club right now, which we can obviously try and improve on. But we knew we weren't going to go and spend mega bucks on another centre half after sending Cameron Carter Vickers. So I don't know what the expectation was for the centre half who would join the club this season for you as supporters. But I feel like there's a lot of people being negative on this one, once again, um, when we should just calm down for a moment. And I don't mean to ever sound condescending. You're allowed to have an opinion. If you don't think he's good enough, then fair enough. Let me know why you don't think he's good enough. And we're going to talk about all of that in this video. But I, I just feel like, you know, we're adding into an area we had to. This is potentially a loan deal. There's not many negatives that surround it, apart from the fact that he's off the back of a poor-ish season. But listen, Celtic's been a place where players have revived their careers before. This is still a 23-year-old guy. He's, you know, his career's not over. Um, this isn't similar to Moy in the sense where he's 31 and he's, he's near finished. You know, we're talking about a guy who's got a long while left in his footballing career, and Celtic can certainly be the place for him to find his best again. So he has German nationality, and you know me, I love the Germans. It's my favourite footballing nation, you could say. Um, Moritz Jens, once again, is the name, 23 years old, on the way out of Lorient after a struggle last season, narrowly avoiding relegation as they finished 16th in Ligue 1. And um, he didn't impress the manager. He lost his starting place in the team in January time um, when the manager thought, you know what, maybe he's not good enough. But as I said, he was interestingly linked with Celtic before he moved to Lorient last summer um, and that was uh, from his move in Switzerland to France so Celtic as I said early on have had interest in the player before and listen I think I'm being very optimistic this season compared to years gone by I would maybe look at someone like Moritz Jens and the, the situation that he's in and be a lot more pessimistic maybe I I'm just feeling the optimism because of how well and just turned around certain players in this squad. And that's one thing, you know, I, I never mean to just jump on the same bandwagon as other folk and saying, oh, if it's good enough for Ange, it's good enough for me. Because I feel like that can be lazy at times. But we are now in a position where Ange Postacoglu has shown us as a Celtic support how good he is at, at turning around players' form. And every he's not made one bad signing. You know, the closest thing to a bad signing that's been made is James McCarthy. And I think saying bad... It's probably a stretch because he's barely kicked the ball for us. So, I, I, you know, we're looking at a manager here who has made spot-on signings um, and, and so far in his, his first full season here. And I still have faith in him to make spot-on signings again. It's a guy that's coming in to fill in the depth. He's not going to be a starter straight away. We need that. What's the point in complaining about it? There is, this is Celtic shop in a very limited market. A very kind of closed market, you could say, where we can't exactly attract the best of the best, especially when it comes down to backup options. There's not a lot of guys out there who are going to want to come to Celtic to be a backup. You know, people are coming to Celtic to play football. Um, and, you know, this guy's 23 years old. He, he done well in his, 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 his role in Switzerland, well enough, um, for a team who probably aren't very similar to Celtic, but he done well enough. You know, players are going to come in to be backups at Celtic and they need to understand that and this is a guy who understands that. And I'm not going to complain about that because we need those depth options. People will say, well, is it much of an improvement on Welsh? Is it much of an improvement on Julian? Well, we don't know. We've never seen him play. I'm hoping he is. Uh, and he got a £3 million move to Lorient last summer. I believe that's what it was reported at, this £3 million anyway. I'm hoping that's right. Um, it was reported a £3 million move. He's got to have done something to get a £3 million move there. And, this is, and I, I don't like to make lazy comparisons and such. But you look at someone like Shane Duffy, right? Came to Celtic, was absolutely awful. Terrible. You would have wrote him off. That's him finished. He's never coming back from that. He's never going to recover. Had a really decent season at Brighton last year. Sometimes moves just don't work out. And you've got to remember, he's playing quite a poor league inside as well. Lorient aren't exactly, you know, the creme de la creme in France. It's a tough league and people make jokes about it being a farmer's league. It's not. It's a tough league to play and it's one of Europe's top five divisions. Lorient are going to be a side that are going to concede more goals, they're going to struggle more um, against the likes of your PSGs, your Marseilles, your Lyons, all these sides. You know, it's not the easiest place to kind of go in and, and form a, you know, a, a kind of stature straight away um, as, a, as a top top side centre half. So, listen, the deal's been reported as a loan deal for Celtic. And I think that once again, just like Moy, there's very low risk attached to bringing in a player on a year-long loan deal and assessing the situation if they're good enough to be a third choice centre half at Celtic. And that's why I feel like there has just been so much overwhelming negatives to both him and Moy, because people are blowing them out of proportions. Like one year contracts, there's not many negatives that can go alongside that.
He also played with uh, Fulham as a youngster, interestingly enough, with Matt O'Reilly. So he's got a bit of a link here at the club. That'll help him settle. There's something else to be positive about. His agent is currently in Glasgow, apparently. And the talk is that season-long loan deal with an option to buy come the end of it. However, some outlets are reporting it could be an obligation to buy. So we're still waiting to hear numbers. Um, if it's an obligation to buy, just a reminder, that works similar to the Dyson Maida deal. So if he joins on loan with an obligation to buy, we must buy him come the end of the loan contract which means he will effectively be a Celtic player a permanent Celtic player now that could be it could make things a little bit I can understand maybe more of the pessimism if the, the fee was quite high uh, on an obligation to buy but hopefully it's an option to buy I would rather that because then you get to properly sit down and assess whether or not you want to keep him around the club and whether or not he's worth the money. Um, so hopefully it's an option to buy, but just, just to throw it out there, some reporting is an obligation. Now, the guy himself has, uh, fancies his chances in an Ange Ball system. He's drawn comparisons to players that he would relate to in the style he likes, not in, in direct comparison with, with Ange and, and Celtic, but in relation to the style. This is what he had to say in an interview before. I don't see myself as a classic central defender who tries to ruin the game. I see myself more as a first line of attack and a player who builds up play. I love having the game in front of me, dictating what pace we go at. I also try to learn a lot from my role models. Jérôme Boateng, probably not the best role model to have nowadays, Jérôme Boateng. Just what I thought, Maritz, I, I maybe rethink that. I don't know when this interview was conducted. Maybe not the best role model to have now. And if you don't know, well, you might want to Google. Uh, but anyway, his role models, Jérôme Boateng and Leonardo Bonucci. Um, the second one, not a bad role model to have, I suppose. But he has drawn up comparisons to his style of play and what he likes to do. And that is a very Ange Postacoglu suited, of course, dictating the game from the back, having the ball, passing it out. Now, I believe statistically there's not much to prove or much to suggest that that is the type of player he has. Uh, he is. But I think he's been at clubs that haven't really allowed the opportunity for that thus far. You know, playing in, it wasn't a top side in Switzerland. And Lorient is certainly not a top side in France. They're not going to have a lot of possession. They're not going to have a lot of um, the ball at the back to dictate play. So Celtic is now the opportunity for him to try and do that. And, and yes, that's a risk because we don't know if it, he's, not, he's not proven that he can. But if he certainly believes in his ability, that's the kind of player you want here in the, the Ange Postecoglou system. So interesting comments from him. Um, could he be the Ange Postecoglou centre-back we need? And that about does it for today's video. I'm going to wrap it up there. There is our two players potentially this week we could be signing. I'm hoping that we sign more beyond that. I don't think there's a desperate need to spend money for no reason whatsoever. But I would like to see us maybe add some more depth in certain areas throughout the rest of the window. But we asked for a centre-back. We asked for a centre-mid. We're getting to it at the moment, um, potentially. We'll see what happens. These deals could fall through. We never know. But Moritz Jens, that's today's news. Um, your thoughts, is he good enough for Celtic? Is he someone you'd be happy with coming through the door? Let me know in the comments below, but I'll do it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.